All right, a 70-team Super League uh, in the world of college football. Now, this isn't a new idea, but this is, I think, the most detail that we've ever kind of seen put out about this particular concept. I'm going to try to go over some of it in this video here. A lot of you may have heard about this. It's not a new idea, so you may have heard about it a while ago. Uh, but an article recently came out uh, on, I believe, on three, detailing some of the specifics uh, around the structure of uh, th this idea that is being pushed by uh, an outside group uh, to sort of move college football from the traditional conference structure that we're used to now into a new uh, sort of 70-team uh, Super League. And I'm going to uh, 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 go over some of the highlights or lowlights, depending on what you think about this idea uh, about this specific proposal. Uh, yeah, look, the helmets. I, I'm getting an odd number of comments about I didn't realize how many people, I guess, cared. Uh, yeah, I took the helmets out of the boxes. I'm putting them on the wall a different way. Um, don't worry. By, by the time the football season rolls around, the wall will be completely covered in helmets again. I'm, 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 I've tried a couple of different things out. Uh, I think I'm going to end up going with this here. So but don't worry about it. They're in no particular order. I'm li I've literally just grabbed random helmets out of a giant box full of helmets. Uh, and I've just been putting them up on the wall in different ways to see how they look or whatever. They'll, by the time, the, like I said, by the time the season rolls around, don't worry. It'll be, it'll be full. It'll be in some type of order, conference order, alphabetical, whatever. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about Uncle Lou's helmets. Uh, they'll be up on, uh, all back up on the wall soon. All right, let's get to this idea of the super uh, uh, 70 team Super League. Okay, now this is how this thing would work here. Conferences would be out the window, and they're going to take 70 teams and form sort of a new division of college football, whatever you want to call that division, right? We, 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 you know, Division one or whatever you decide to go with. It's going to be 70 teams. Now, which 70 teams is it going to be? Well, if you take the power four conferences that are left right now, uh, if my math is correct, and believe me, if it's not, multiple people will let me know in the comments. I believe we're at uh, 67 or 68. I think it's 67 teams right now, 67. It's an odd number because the ACC recently added three teams, an odd number. So uh, basically the breakdown on that is you've got the SEC, which – uh, used to be at 14 teams. Then they added Texas and Oklahoma. So the SEC now at 16. You've got the Big 12, who forever was at 10 teams. They then lost Texas and Oklahoma, which would have put them at eight. So they added four more, uh, UCF, Cincinnati, BYU, and Houston, which put them at 12. Then they added four more again, uh, Arizona, Arizona State, uh, uh, Colorado and Utah, which now puts the Big 12 at 16. So you got Big 12, SEC, 16 each. The ACC is, I believe, at 17. They were at 14, and then they added Stanford, Cal, and SMU. So it puts them at 17. The Big 10 was at 14 for a long time. Now they've added four more. The West Coast Schools, Southern Cal, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, they're at 18. That gets you to 67 uh, because of the odd number in the ACC. If you throw Notre Dame into the mix, of course, that puts you up to 68. Where would the other two teams come from to get us to the 70-team Super League? I guess the quickest, obvious answer would be uh, Oregon State and Washington State, which were previously Power 5 teams as members of the Pac-12. The Pac-12 goes away. Everybody comes in and takes everything out of the Pac-12 except for Oregon State and Washington State. So... I guess for the sake of simplicity, we'll include those two teams into this 70-team Super League idea that's being batted around. Now, how would those 70 teams then be divided? Well, you would have seven divisions of 10 teams each. Uh, so <laughs> 70 teams in the, it, under the same umbrella, 10 divisions within that umbrella. Right away, some questions come up about that for me. What do you call the 10 divisions? Now, in the end, I guess it doesn't really matter, but historically and sort of traditionally it might matter. For instance, if you wanted to call one of those divisions the SEC division or the Big 10 division or the Big 12 division or whatever, right? Let's just go with the SEC. Well, which 10 teams get to be a part of that SEC division? Do you include all the original members of the SEC and then fill it out from there? 
uh, what, what happens to Texas and Oklahoma? Are they, you know, again, it doesn't matter technically because all 70 teams are in the same league. We're talking about just divisions within a league here. But to a lot of people, it's going to matter. I mean, if you were to tell, you know, if you name an, if you name one of the divisions SEC and then you tell Alabama you're not in the SEC division, I think Alabama would have a problem with that, as would Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, Tennessee, so forth and so on. So how you name the divisions, you know, again, that information is left out of the article. And for all I know, they won't even name the divisions, the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, the ACC, whatever the case. Who knows? But anyway, 70 teams, one league. Seven divisions of ten teams within each uh, within each league, right? So that gets us to the seventy teams. Well, what happens to everybody else? All of the other teams, right? The, what we refer to now is sort of your group of five teams: uh, Boise State, App State, uh, Central Florida. Uh, the, the list on and on and on and on. What happens to those? Well, there would be a a league below the Super League. <laughs> And it would consist of however many number of teams. The article suggests that it may only consist of 10 other teams in that league below the Super League. And every year, they are going to implement, according to their plan, a relegation system. Now, this is a system that's been used in Europe for a long time with soccer. I think the people that are pushing this idea would be better off or more well-suited not even to mention that a lot of Americans, a lot of people over here, a lot of college football fans hear the word soccer associated with college football in any way. And they immediately throw their hands up, red flag. No, we hate soccer. We don't have anything to do with it. I'm going to explain it in soccer terms, but I I think moving forward, they need to try to get away from even using the word soccer when explaining uh, the relegation system. But basically the way this would work, You would have your 70-team Super League, and then you would have the league below that. And and again, the number of teams, let's say it's 10, right? Well, at the end of a season, if you're in that lower league, they're going to take, let's say, the top three teams. And and again, they don't say the number. So it could be just the top team. It could be the top two. It could be the top three. Whatever, we'll say three. They're going to take the top three teams from that lower league, right? And they're going to bump them up into the 70 team super league. They're then going to take the three worst teams that were in that 70 league super team the year before and relegate them down to the lower league for the following year. That's where the term relegation comes from. And again, this is something that's been used in European soccer leagues forever. But I think as far as explaining this for college football, we need to get away from using the word soccer because it turns so many people off. But basically what it is is you're taking the the best couple of lower league teams from the previous year, bumping them up to the main league, and you're taking the worst couple of teams from the main league at the end of every year and bumping them down for the following year to the lower league. That's how it would work. 70 teams in a super league, you'd have two, three, four, five, whatever number they come up with, a team turnover every year. A certain number of teams from up here last year would be bumped down, and a certain number of teams from down here would be bumped up. That's sort of the overall 50,000-foot view of how it would work. The postseason would be taking taken completely away uh, from any sort of selection committee. That's something else they mention. They do not mention how they... W- how the postseason would be selected. I, I'm assuming if the, you know if that 70 team league, like they mentioned, is broken down into seven 10 team divisions. Obviously, the winner of those divisions make the playoffs. So that would give you seven playoff teams. How many playoff teams will we have? If, do they go with 10, 12, 4, whatever they you know, whatever number they go with? How do you then select those other teams? Would it be like an NFL model where it's based strictly on your record? At the end of the year, and there is absolutely no human involvement at all. Again, the article doesn't spell all of that out um, completely. The TV ratings and the TV contracts, which a lot of people, rightly so to a large degree, blame on sort of the collapse of college football as we've known it, which is occurring right before our eyes right now with you know conferences going away, teams changing conferences, huge television contracts, teams suing their own league because they feel like they're not making enough money, NIL, all of this stuff is addressed here in this article. We'll start with the TV contract side of things. 70-team Super League, seven divisions within that league, 10 teams each. 
each division would not be negotiating their own TV contract. The 70 team league as a whole would negotiate the TV contract, uh, presumably with multiple TV networks. So it wouldn't be just ESPN televising this division or just Fox televising that division. It would be a, a general TV contract that covered the entire 70 team league. And then much like, um, it works now, maybe the networks bid on games from a week to week basis, <coughs> But uh, you wouldn't have certain divisions tied in with just certain networks and, you know, ESPN controlling this and Fox controlling that or whatever, like it seems to be the case now. It would be one TV contract to cover the entire 70-team league. NIL. NIL would be taken out of the hands of boosters, fans, alumni, collectives, all of this stuff that's going on now, and be moved in-house to the school. Players would be paid. In, uh, under this structure by the school how much would they be paid again that specifically is not addressed they do say that there would be a cap i don't know uh, w whether you're talking about a per player cap or a, a sort of like a salary cap uh that like we have in professional sports where each team is allowed to pay a total number of 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 money out per year uh, but that is addressed um, I think it's worth noting it, it which it, it's probably obvious by this point, but this 70 team league would be completely separate from the NCAA. The NCAA would have no control whatsoever at all in any way over what goes on in this 70 team um, league. None. It doesn't address who would have control or who would be in charge. Obviously, if they went to this sort of a system and they did away completely with the NCAA, you would need someone in charge, right? You uh, Again, <clears throat> I know we all hate the NFL or at least pretend to on the internet. You would probably end up with some sort of NFL structure in terms of um, rules or who's in charge. Um, you know, if you're caught doing things you're not supposed to do, what would the punishments be? That would probably be controlled by a central figure not any, you know, it's not like this division down here would have one set of rules with one governing body and that division would have a different set of rules with a different governing body. There would be one set of rules for the entire 70 teams and one governing body overseeing those 70 teams. Who would those people be? Would it be one person sort of like you have in the NFL with a Roger Goodell type, a, a commissioner? Would it be a board? Um, again, it doesn't, it doesn't lay out all of those specifics, but again, that's just something obvious that comes to mind when you read the structure that they're they're wanting to put in place. You, you've obviously got to have some set of rules that all 70 teams know and all 70 teams agree to, and then if they are caught, are, uh, caught breaking those rules or playing outside of those rules, there's got to be some sort of punishment. In order for there to be a punishment, there's got to be a board or a person or a commissioner or something to implement and then enforce that punishment. But again, the article gets into none of how that would be, um, how that would be uh, uh, decided. So a 70 team super league, um, what do you think? Are, do, do you think that's something we could see happen? Would you be in favor of that? Um, obviously there's, you know, when you read the article, especially in, 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 well, listening to me try to explain it probably too. <laughs> A lot more questions than answers come to mind. Um, I, I think this solves some problems for sure. Um, but like anything else, it probably creates some problems that we don't have now. Sometimes you can foresee those. Sometimes you can't. Um, but I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of talk about it. There's articles all over about it. Um, so 70 teams, 10 divisions, or seven, sorry, seven divisions. Seven divisions of 10 teams each, all under the same umbrella of a quote-unquote Super League. Uh, one TV contract to cover all 70 teams, not the individual conference contracts we have now. Uh, the playoff committee would disappear. ESPN would no longer be the sole broadcaster of any postseason. Again, it would be uh, a TV contract negotiated for all 70 teams that would include the postseason. And that would be divvied up amongst the different networks that that bid on the games and, and bid on the contracts. And uh, again, really, when you read it, it sounds a lot like what you have in the NFL, right? 
Um, you usually have a couple of networks a year that show most of the NFL games. One shows the AFC, one shows the NFC. You got a third network maybe that shows Monday night game. So whatever, you'd have multiple networks in on this thing showing regular season games, and it would be, uh, you know, the postseason would be included in that. NIL would be moved from private to in-house where teams would be in charge of it on uh, themselves and on their own. Players would have contracts. The contracts would be public. You would know what players were being paid. Uh, you would know what the total amount a team was paying for its players. There would be a cap in place so that, you know, a Georgia couldn't go out and have a hundred million dollar team while, um, you know, uh, Georgia Tech is out here with a $20 million team. It would be a cap on it. Uh, you can't spend more than that amount per year. Anyway, let me know what you think specifically about the relegation idea. Um, yeah, I, it would be hard, I think, to get teams and schools to, to agree to relegation. Uh, 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 like, take Vandy, for example, out of the SEC, right? Is a school like Vanderbilt really going to vote for relegation? Um, would Georgia Tech right now vote for relegation? Uh, would, uh, you know, whoever, who's really terrible in the uh, Big Ten? A lot of teams. Uh, <laughs> A lot of teams, uh, would they vote for relegation knowing that they could be signing their own death warrant? Basically, you know, they, they could, they could vote for relegation in the following year. They're no longer a member of that 70 team league. And the only way to get back into that 70 team league is to win a lower league or to come in first or second in a lower league. Um, I guess the best way to kind of describe the leagues would be sort of like, uh, if you want to try to find an American equivalent, see, there's not really one. Um, cause we don't do relegation over here, but like the minor league baseball system, you know, so you've got the Atlanta Braves, right. Or major league baseball team. And then the Atlanta Braves have several farm teams, double a single a or single a double a triple a, all that kind of thing. Right. So the 70 team league would be the major leagues. And then all the teams underneath that would play in triple a or double a or whatever it is. And if you, if, if you, take AAA as the league closest to the big leagues, again, using a baseball analogy here, the top couple of teams from the AAA the, the, the following year would be bumped up into the, the major leagues, the 70-team Super League. So instead of bumping players up, which is what they do in baseball, right? You, you're doing really well in AAA. They move you up to the big leagues. It would be entire teams would be moved up from the lower league to the major leagues, the 70-team Super League. And then you shit to bed, you're Vandy, you go 2-10, and 10, you go 0-12, whatever the case, you would get bumped down to the AAA league the following year. Um, another thing that's not addressed here is scheduling. Now, obviously, if you go to, to uh, 7 10 team divisions, right, well, it would take nine games to play every team in your division. There's 10 teams you don't play yourself, so every team, I'm assuming, would play every team in their division every year. That gives us nine regular season games. Where do we make up the other three? Where do the other three games come from? Are the other three games played against lower league teams? Are you no longer allowed to play lower league teams? Do you have to play teams from one of the other uh, super league divisions? Um, if you do, who do you play? How's that decided? Is it on a rotating schedule? Is it decided every year from year to year based on how teams did the year before? Again, it doesn't address any of that. Um, so, you know, let's say, you know, you got Georgia and nine other teams that are in some division. Georgia's going to play those nine teams every year. If you stick with a 12-game regular season, where are the other three games come from? Is it up to Georgia to schedule those games on, on their own, which is the case now? Or does whoever's running that league also handle the scheduling. Now, I think that would probably be the best case scenario. I think scheduling has needed to be taken out of the hands of the schools for a long, long time. Um, this is where you get a lot of the inequality or inequity in one schedule versus another. Now, you can't, you know, you have to play the nine teams in your division. So if you've got a couple of really bad teams in your division, well, then you just got a couple of really bad teams in your division. That's just, you know, that, that's just the way it goes. That's how it is in sports. You take baseball, the NFL, basketball, or even football now. You know, you're going to get a couple of quote-unquote cupcakes because you're going to have some teams in your division that just aren't any good. Um, you know, then you're going to have a case where some other division might have a, you know, be loaded with a bunch of good teams. So, you know, the, the idea of schedule equality 
is a pipe dream, that's never going to happen. You're never going to have a scenario where everyone's schedule is exactly the same. You just can't. Different teams are going to be good and bad and somewhere in between every year, and you can't control that. But in terms of the non-division scheduling, right, if you want to stick with the 12-game regular season, which I'm assuming would be the case, although, again, this article doesn't delve into that, where do you get those other three teams from? Right? Are they other Super League teams or do you play lower league teams? And who makes those decisions? Who schedules those games? The school on its own like we have now or does the league handle that um, by itself? If we go to some sort of really extended playoff in a Super League, uh, right? Like right now they're bumping it to 12. They're looking like they want to go to 14. You know, so you're playing now three, four playoff games, right? Instead of the two we've been playing. If they expand the playoffs even more, if they went to 16 or 20 teams or whatever the case, you're adding more games on to the end of the season. Well, do they then decide to just shorten the regular season? Do they just call it at nine games? You know, they've got seven uh, 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 seven divisions of 10 teams each. Everybody's going to play nine regular season games. You're going to play everybody in your division and that's it. And then we're going to see the postseason. Is that it? Is that all? I mean, I don't know. So there's a lot of questions here. Again, it, it doesn't lay everything out fully, but it is the most detailed explanation that I've seen anywhere on this so-called Super League uh, that a lot of people think we may be headed to. You hear a lot of talk about headed towards a two sort of conference um, system where you've got basically the Big Ten at 20 or 24 teams and the SEC at 20 or 24 teams. That only gets us to 48 teams, and maybe that's enough. Maybe Maybe you want that. I don't know. This idea, the 70-team Super League idea, at least preserves a lot more college football programs at the upper echelon of college football, what what they call the Super League or what we now refer to as the Power 5 or Power 4. So I don't know. Anyway, the article's been out for a couple of days. I've seen a lot of people commenting on it, so I thought I would get on here and kind of discuss it a little bit. Um, I I don't really want any of that. I I would prefer to go back to a five-conference thing i mean was it perfect no but again we just laid out this idea here and it it would have problems too there is no perfect solution here um if i could wave a magic wand i would go back four or five years before texas and oklahoma left the big 12 for the sec and i would kind of hit the pause button right there and i'd leave everything the same sec acc big 10 big 12 pac 12 maybe you make some tweaks to how the playoff teams are um awarded right um, I've had a lot of fun, you know, messing with Florida State fans over the last six months or whatever it's been now. But we all know if we were in their situation, we'd be irate about it too. So maybe you go, you know, maybe you make some tweaks to how teams get into the playoffs, or, you know, whatever. But uh, anyway, I'm rambling now. Let me know what you think, and uh, have a good morning. <laughs>